sonography of renal cystic disease. Now, renal cystic disease is diagnosed earlier and earlier because of more accessible routine prenatal ultrasound and also due to advances in ultrasound technology. The renal uh, cystic disease relate to the imaging findings of a particular disease. The description has improved over the years and the appearance in newborns may be different from those adolescents and predicting prognosis or deciding on optimal follow-up intervals can be challenging starting with the diagnosis. So this lecture takes into account these two recent articles or uh, consensus uh, statements or guidelines uh, published recently. Now renal cystic disease can be life limiting or involve grave prognosis or can result in chronic kidney disease because uh, the uh, certain diseases results in grave prognosis for many and if it, such diseases are seen in the antenatal period the couples decide to terminate that is one factor but there are recent advances in the management postnatal management of renal cystic disease and also improvement in transplantation results resulting in improved survival as a result the requirement for guidelines and consensus statement has become necessary and that is why these articles have come one of the recent um, advancement in renal cystic disease is this awareness about celiopathy now, celiopathy is a genetic uh, disease group involving the primary non-motile cilia in the cells which uh, line the ducts of the kidney and liver and it forms integral to proper renal and hepatic development. So, this celiopathy is due to defects of primary uh, cilia, affect wide variety of tissues and organ systems and it has got genetic and phenotypic heterogeneity uh, which thing makes things complex and uh, as a result it causes a very wide range of overlapping syndromes. Basically it involves fibrocystic disease of the kidney and liver with or without abnormalities of other organ systems. Now celiopathy can manifest as mainly visceral celiopathies, uh, central nervous celiopathies for example Joubert syndrome and related disorders, skeletal celiopathies uh, example is short rib polydactyly syndrome, uh, asphyxiating thoracic dystrophy, Ellis van Krivel syndrome and also celiopathy syndromes uh, example being orofacial digital syndrome. Now coming to renal celiopathy is characterized by presence of renal cysts due to uncontrolled epithelial cell proliferation growth and polarity. There is also downstream of dysregulated ciliary dependent signaling which results in kidney failure requiring dialysis and transplantation over time. So the incidence of renal ciliopathy is 1 in 2000 and uh, the diseases which, uh, of renal ciliopathy are autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, nephronophthysis and also syndromes like Bader Biddle syndrome, Meckel Grubert syndrome and Joubert syndrome. The renal ciliopathy involves cysts or parenchyma embolomality of the kidney with um, various uh, associated uh, anomalies of other organ systems as shown in this schematic diagram. We will see in detail. The role of sonography in renal cystic disease is in the differential diagnosis, looking for associated anomalies and arriving at a most probable diagnosis. Based on that, do a genetic testing and come to a diagnosis and prognosticate uh, depending upon the uh, various findings and Based on that, uh, the prognosis, counsel the patient and the family 
and of course follow up of the disease where it is necessary the protocol for renal cystic disease is ultrasound is the first investigation of choice and ct mri is not recommended for routine assessment of kidney cysts many uh, cystic kidney diseases manifest initially as echogenic kidneys without visible cysts this is this is can develop later so as a result the uh, cystic disease and echogenic kidneys are considered together more uh, often in the prenatal uh, sonography but also in the postnatal life so renal cystic disease can manifest as echogenic kidneys or cystic kidneys or echogenic kidneys with cysts or rarely it can be initially of normal morphology may uh, develop uh, abnormalities over time so the protocol involves uh, scanning the kidneys uh, measuring the size of the kidneys whether small normal or increased and then echogenicity of the parenchyma which can be assessed subjectively or comparing with liver and spleen and looking for corticomedullary differentiation and looking for cysts the cyst can be a solitary renal cyst or it can be multiple unilateral cysts or bilateral cysts and or echogenic kidneys and then look for associated anomalies in clinically look at the hands and feet thorax spine posterior fossa by other imaging and then liver pancreas genitalia by ultrasound and also go into the family history and um, ultrasound of the kidneys and other organs and ultrasound of the parents and grandparents for looking at the kidneys and liver and also genetic studies which make it complete now sonography of renal cystic disease is for diagnosis for prognosis and rational management of the condition now renal cystic disease can be focal or it can be multifocal when it is multifocal it can be acquired or heritable or it can be infectious cause so in renal cystic disease first the clinical background has to be looked for one is the age of the patient family history of uh, similar disease symptoms of presentation physical findings and renal functional status these are uh, to be assessed and when uh, doing ultrasound if macroscopic cysts are present the number of cysts have to be described whether it is 1 or 2 to 5 or 6 to 10 or more than 10 and laterality whether it is unilateral or bilateral and location of the cysts whether it is cortical medullary or cortico medullary junction or uh, everywhere and size of the uh, cysts we have to give the maximum diameter of the largest cysts and we also uh, an ultrasound the abnormal features of the cysts have to be looked for like septations internal echoes calcification thickened wall and also on color doppler flow in the septations or in the cyst wall and the protocol also includes ultrasound examination of the liver for cysts signs of fibrosis signs of port hypertension and biliary dilatation or cystic transformation of the intrahepatic bile ducts called the carolis syndrome and also in the females internal genitalia have to be looked for and one important uh, technical uh, point is the high uh, frequency probes have to be used for better delineation as shown in this example there are bilateral enlarged kidneys using the conventional uh, convex probe and using a high frequency convex probe 5 to 9 it is better uh, shown but uh, kid- kidney is enlarged and you see uh, some cysts but when you use uh, uh, linear 5 to 12 megahertz you see that the enlargement of the kidney is due to enla- marked enlargement of the renal pyramids so once this is seen then it is very diagnostic and uh, we know the condition as autosomal recessive polycystic kidney so high frequency probes have to be used for better diagnosis now coming to the various conditions first is a simple cyst 
these are some examples of uh, simple cyst the characteristics are kidney with otherwise normal parenchyma so you see a cyst in an otherwise normal kidney and the other kidney contralateral kidney is normal and the cyst is seen as a round thin and smooth walled echo poor uh, or an echoic uh, lesion and it is not septated there are no septa and because it is a cyst containing fluid there is acoustic enhancement which confirms that it is cyst and it is should not be connected to the collecting system and uh, on color doppler there should not be any flow related to the cyst so renal cyst should be critically examined to confirm simpleness you have to rule out all the other uh, uh, features so it is a simpleness is a uh, diagnosis of exclusion no further evaluation is needed if a renal cyst is simple if you conclude that it is a simple cyst no further evaluation is necessary now simple cyst location can be in the center of the parenchyma it can be cortical or it can be in the medulla as seen here or it can be in one of the poles which is more common and or it can be very rarely exophytic it is bulging out of the surface of the kidney the simple cyst can be multiple as seen here they are uh, the characteristics are maintained but they are multiple in number the simple cyst occurrence age, uh, varies with the age it is very rare in children than in adults now these are two cases of children uh, with uh, uh, small cyst it is less than 0.5% in children more than 10% in adults aged 50 years or older and more than 30% in adults more than 70 years this shows that the simple cyst incidence increases with age particularly after 50 years now differential diagnosis for a simple cyst is it may be a first manifestation of other cystic diseases like polycystic kidney this is particularly show in show in a child or it can be calicial diverticulae hydrocalyx pseudoaneurysm cystic dysplasia and hydatid cyst so here this is an example of a cyst but you see medially a calculus at the neck so this is due to uh, hydrocalyx due to a calculus impacted in the infant develop so this shows that it is not a cyst it is a, a focal calyctasis now if this calculus is not seen still it can be a calicial diverticulum which cannot be uh, differentiated from cyst by ultrasound on ivp it will be differentiated because calicial diverticulum will fill up with contrast because it communicates with the calyx whereas uh, a cyst does not communicate now another uh, differential diagnosis is pseudoaneurysm now here you see uh, a cyst in the lower pole and uh, put on color doppler you see that there is flow inside a circular flow inside indicating that it is a pseudoaneurysm so whenever you see a cyst anywhere in the body uh, you have to rule out a vascular lesion by putting on color doppler box so that is a pseudoaneurysm so when you see a, a child with a, a cyst on the first time diagnosis it, it is a diagnosis of exclusion and a detailed uh, medical and family history has to be uh, taken to rule out that it is initial part of a larger disease like polycystic kidney so for that detailed medical and family history has to be taken thorough clinical examination and at least one follow up assessment has to be done after the diagnosis and um, does not need contrast enhanced ultrasound mri or ct imaging for uh, diagnosis then we come to cyst in adults so cyst in adults uh, there is a bosnoy classification of renal cyst based on ct scan which is not applicable on ultrasound in ultrasound you look for uh, whether it is simple or a complex cyst what are the characteristics of complex cyst there may be septations internal echoes solid component mural nodularity or thickened walls so when you see this ct scan may be needed to assess likelihood of to rule out malignancy so this is a complex cyst because of internal echoes and fluid debris level here you see internal echoes in the cyst it may be due to hemorrhage infection or tumor 
Now this is an example of uh, a cyst with fluid fluid level. Again, it may be due to hemorrhage, infection, or tumor. Another example of a complex cyst where you see a cyst and you see a soft tissue, a mass within the cyst. It can be a fresh clot. So you have to rule out a fresh clot by changing, looking for mobility of the clot by changing the position of the patient. Here you see in supine the location of the mass and when you put the patient in right lateral decubitus, you see that the mass has moved to the uh, right side indicating that it is mobile. So it becomes a fresh clot. And also you can use color Doppler. There will not be any flow uh, in the clot whereas there may be flow in a soft tissue mass. Then another uh, feature of complex is septations. They are usually uh, flimsy septa. Now uh, thin versus thick uh, septum, the cutoff is 1 millimeter and there is no flow in the septa. So that is uh, the characteristic. Now you have to differentiate between septated versus two cysts adjacent. Sometimes it cannot be differentiated. Now septations, uh, there may be focal septal thickening of uh, more than one millimeter. And uh, then you call it uh, septal thickening. And uh, there may be calcification in the septum. Now calcification in the cyst, it can be fine and linear or thick and amorphous or it can be milk of calcium. Milk of calcium indicates that it is a benign cyst. Now calcification as seen here is fine and linear in the wall or in the septum. So fine focal calcification without any solid component or thick septa is of no significance. It can it need not be evaluated further or it need not be followed up. Whereas amorphous, thick amorphous calcifications as seen here in the septum may need excision and uh, biopsy to rule out malignancy. Now milk of calcium it can occur in a cyst and uh, the characteristic of milk of calcium is the fluid, fluid level and uh, with the shift of the position the fluid level also will change. Then we come to the wall characteristics. Uh, the simple cyst it will be imperceptible whereas in a complex cyst nodularity as seen here in a complex cyst or there may be a frank solid nodule as seen here. The renal cyst can also rupture or leak outside as seen here you see the cyst and um, uh, patients usually present as acute flank pain and here you see fluid in the perinephric space adjacent to the cyst and the kidney will be fixed. So these are features of a leaking uh, cyst. In, again a cyst can become infected. Features of an infected cyst are thick walls as seen here and internal echoes. Internal echoes are a debris and uh, because of inflammation echogenic inflamed perinephric fat as shown here and because it is infection the kidney becomes fixed and also there will be clinical tenderness, uh, probe tenderness may be there. And of course, clinical features of fever and sickness may be present. So that is an infected cyst. Now another differential diagnosis for uh, uh, cyst is hydatid cyst. Hydatid cyst in the kidney as seen here in the upper pole may be unilocular cystic mass when it is difficult to differentiate from a simple cyst. But usually it is multilocular because of multiple daughter cysts within the cyst as seen here which gives a typical uh, or characteristic appearance of a hydatid cyst. With the death of the parasite, the cyst wall gets calcified. Then we come to complex cysts can be due to a tumor. As seen here, you see uh, thick septate and when color Doppler, there is flow in the septa indicating that it is tumor, it is not a cyst. Now here again, you see uh, thick walls and a thick septum and internal echoes and solid area uh, in the cyst. So these are all features of uh, uh, tumor. Again on color Doppler you will see flow within the thickened wall or thickened septum or in the solid area. Now here again same thick walls, thick septa, internal echoes, solid area and flow on color Doppler. Now necrotic tumor uh, can also present as a cyst but the features will be thick irregular walls as seen here 
and when uh, color doppler there will be a increased flow in the thickened walls suggesting that it is a necrotic tumor and uh, rare uh, appearance of uh, uh, tumor uh, is mimicking a cyst with internal echoes as seen here you see the acoustic enhancement showing that it is a cyst but it is filled with echoes uh, of soft tissue mass appearance so it can be a clot or it can be a tumor but there is acoustic enhancement indicating that it is a cyst or necrosis and then when you put on color you see flow within the mass indicating that it is a tumor within the cyst mimicking a clot the cyst can be parapelvic in location as seen here it's a smaller cyst um, here in the central echogenic area and the largest cyst in the central echogenic area this can mimic uh, hydronephrosis but uh, there is no communication with the calyces and it is eccentric in location as seen here this is the parenchyma on this side parenchyma is not seen showing that it is uh, rising from this part of the parenchyma and you will see uh, the renal pelvis uh, separately from the cyst. These are uh, diagnostic features for a parapelvic cyst. Our next condition of renal cystic disease is medullary sponge kidney, which is dilated ectatic collecting tubules in the enlarged renal uh, pyramids with a normal renal size and it is generally bilateral with a normal renal function and 12% of patients may show calculi in the renal pyramids uh, called the medullary nephrocalcinosis. Usually it is seen in third and fourth decades. Now this is typical appearance of medullary spongy kidney, enlarged echogenic medullary pyramids and you may see medullary calcific foci of varying uh, size. These are tiny or they may be larger in size also and there may be frank calculi along these features calculi in the collecting system. Normal renal size and contour and the differential diagnosis for this appearance is medullary spongy kidney, renal tubular acidosis and recessive polycystic kidney disease. Now renal tubular acidosis is a condition where kidneys inability to excrete enough acid or retain enough bicarbonate but the renal function will be normal. This results in a clinical syndrome characterized by metabolic acidosis. So on ultrasound we get enlarged echogenic pyramids there may be also medullary nephrocalcinosis present or absent. It may be of autosomal dominant or recessive types. Then we come to bilateral renal cysts or echogenic kidney. So it can be bilateral cysts or echogenic kidneys or both. So this may uh, have a typical pattern or atypical non-specific pattern now in typical pattern the size has to be looked for the parenchyma and the cyst so based on these features you that this leads to a specific uh, diagnosis of a condition and uh, second is a non-specific pattern where there are no diagnostic or significant salient features so only differential diagnosis can be entertained and it will need a uh, uh, supplementary investigations particularly genetic investigation to arrive at a diagnosis. Now typical pattern of uh, bilateral cystic uh, kidneys can be isolated confined to kidneys or it can form part of polymalformative syndromes and uh, may need genetic diagnosis in most of the situations. Now typical pattern of isolated type uh, the conditions are bilateral multicystic kidney, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease and autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease nephronophthysis. A multicystic dysplastic kidney is a non-hereditary developmental anomaly. The kidney is non-functioning. So if it is bilateral multicystic kidney disease, it is lethal. So it is not seen in the postnatal life. So in postnatal life, we see only unilateral multicystic kidney disease. It may be isolated or there may be additional urogenital tract anomalies which is seen in about 35% and the commonest of which is contralateral PUJ obstruction forms 30% or there may be extra renal anomalies in 50%, 15%. 
ஆனால் அல்ட்ரசவுண்ட் மல்டி சிஸ்டிக் டிஸ்பிளாஸ்டிக் கிட்னி சீன் எஸ் மல்டிபிள் டிஸார்கனைஸ் ஆஃப் வேரியிங் சைஸ் எஸ் சீன் ஹியர் இன் தி சாஜிட்டல் அண்ட் டிரான்ஸ்ஃபர் ஸ்கேன் தி சிஸ் ஆர் நான் கம்யூனிகேட்டிங் அண்ட் தி சிஸ் ரீப்ளேஸ் த ஹோல் கிட்னி அண்ட் lacking any normal surrounding parenchyma so here you don't see any parenchyma around this cis so these are the characteristic features of multicystic dysplastic kidney now this has to be differentiated it can be mimicked by puj obstruction as seen here this is a sagittal scan so the appearance may be multicystic dysplastic kidney or hydranephrosis so the crucial technique is to take a coronal scan so with coronal scan you see that uh, there are the cysts are actually dilated peripheral calices communicating with the medial large pelvis and the ureter is not dilated and the pare there is surrounding parenchyma which may be thinned out so this shows that this is puj obstruction in contrast here this is a sagittal scan of a multi cystic uh, kidney and coronal scan the appearance is the same the cysts of varying size non communicating that is the very crucial uh, differentiating point and there is no surrounding parenchyma then the diagnosis is multi cystic dysplastic kidney so these are the differentiating points now multi cystic dysplastic kidney the variations are it can present atypically here uh, it may form uh, it may be segmental involving only one moiety of a duplex kidney so here the upper half of the kidney is normal whereas the lower half of the kidney is uh, typical of multi cystic dysplastic kidney and here again another example the lower half of the kidney is normal the upper half shows features of multi cystic dysplastic kidney or it can be involving one moiety of a horseshoe kidney or an ectopic kidney so here this is an example of multi cystic dysplasia of one moiety of a horseshoe kidney now this is a coronal scan of the right flank showing that the kidney is not seen but it is there are a few cysts in the right renal area and a scan of the uh, left flank shows the lower pole is more medial and uh, the contour of the lower pole is not clear this giving rise to a suspicion of horseshoe kidney and when you do a transfer scan for the isthmus the isthmus they seen but on the it is replaced by uh, multiple cysts the right side of the isthmus is replaced by uh, multiple cysts suggestive of multi cystic dysplasia of the right kidney so this is uh, ex- uh, features of multi cystic dysplasia of one moiety that is the right moiety of the horseshoe kidney another variation is uh, multi cystic dysplasia of one moiety of uh, an l shaped kidney on the left side this is coronal flank on the right uh, side you see that the kidney is uh, absent uh, is empty right renal fossa on the coronal scan of the left flank shows the medial uh, more medial lower pole and with a little anterior tilt of the transducer you see a cyst medial to the uh, lower pole of the left kidney and when you do a transfer scan you see the typical appearance of multi cystic dysplasia involving um the horizontal right kidney of the l shaped kidney so this is an example of uh, multi cystic dysplasia of the horizontal right kidney of an l shaped kidney it can also involve uh, cross ectopic uh, kidney here this is coronal scan of the left flank the left renal fossa is empty and um, uh, the right kidney uh, was normal and uh, search for an ectopic kidney shows that the there is a multi cystic dysplasia of the cross ectopic right kidney in the right iliac fossa in children with unilateral multi cystic dysplastic kidney the contralateral kidney should be monitored with serial ultrasound to ensure continued appropriate compensatory hypertrophy involving that kidney and also to look for involution because the multi cystic dysplastic kidney has potential to involute there is no evidence for an increased risk of malignancy in multi cystic dysplasia in children and young adults so monitoring solely to exclude malignancy is not necessary so multi cystic dysplasia is usually unilateral in postnatal life most of them involute and so it is compatible with normal life there may be genital malformations in a female so here you see uh, <coughs> multi cystic dysplasia of uh, the left kidney 
at one year of age and when followed up you see that it is completely disappeared so complete involution of the multicystic dysplasia has happened then we come to the next uh, condition of bilateral cysts isolated it is autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease and congenital hepatic fibrosis this is a combination this is the most common uh, celiopathy it affects liver and kidneys of varying degree in kidneys um, there is non obstructive fusiform dilatation of the renal connecting ducts in enlarged renal pyramids in liver there may be hepatic fibrosis or ductal plate malformation when there is fibrosis it is progressive leading to portal hypertension and ductal plate malformation leads to dilated bile ducts and cysts the incidence is 1 in 20000 live births there is no sex predilection 50% of patients develop kidney failure by age of 10 years there is extreme variability in the clinical manifestation of this condition and it is caused by a mutation of the pkht gene on uh, 6p12 chromosome here you see the celiopathy that is the normal development of the celia results in normal kidney abnormal celia results in abnormal collecting duct resulting in autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease and as a result involving the celia in the liver results in abnormal cysts in the liver or dilated bile ducts so on ultrasound arpkd you see bilateral markedly enlarged kidneys as seen in the images the uniform shape is maintained and the contour is smooth and uh, the parenchyma is echo hyperechoic and homogeneously hyperechoic and uh, there is a sonolucent rim of cortex around uh, in the periphery this compression of the cortex by the enlarged renal pyramids and the cortical medullary differentiation is lost because mainly the uh, cortex gets thinned out and uh, the sinus echoes is not distinguished these are very characteristic features of autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease there may be certain variations um, in the appearance now uh, here bilateral enlarged kidneys but the main difference is the cortical medullary differentiation is reversed so here you see the uh, renal pyramids are enlarged and echogenic whereas the cortex is echo poor and um, normally the medulla will be echo poor sinus echoes are not distinguished and when you use high frequency transducers you see, you see that the pyramids are enlarged with the tiny cysts as well as common tail artifacts because of milk of calcium in the tiny cysts now this um, cysts are so small that uh, in the convex probe they are not uh, delineated but the enhancement is seen resulting in echogen enlarged echogenic pyramids now another uh, appearance is enlarged kidneys with uh, an enhanced cortical medullary differentiation so the normal uh, echo uh, pyramids and uh, echogenic cortex gets enhanced because of the cysts in the medulla and when you use high frequency uh, transducer you see that the renal pyramids are markedly enlarged and you see the tiny uh, tubular cysts replacing the renal pyramids so as a result the cortical medullary differentiation is enhanced now here again uh, a case of uh, arpkd the convex probe shows enlarged kidneys and when you use high frequency you see the typical enlarged pyramids with tiny tubular cysts the entire pyramids are replaced with tiny tubular cysts another example of arpkd in the convex probe and when you use high frequency probe you see the enlarged pyramids with tiny tubular ducts as well as you may see certain few macro cysts as seen here so another appearance um, uh, of uh, arpkd is enlarged bilateral enlarged kidneys with uh, the heterogeneous uh, parenchymal echogenicity with a salt and pepper pattern you see the uh, salt and pepper pattern uh, seen in the enlarged renal pyramids which is due to and when you use high frequency you see that it is due to enlarged pyramids with tiny cysts as well as carbot tails because of milk of calcium in some cysts so this is another appearance of arpkd so it is um, appearance uh, is highly variable so another example of arpkd but here there may be um, abnormal uh, liver 
in the form of hepatic fibrosis. You see the coarse echo pattern of the liver, typical of uh, characteristic of hepatic fibrosis. Or you may see ductal plate malformation leading to dilated uh, bile ducts and also cysts in the liver or without hepatic fibrosis. So this is the additional findings you must look for in IRPKD. The renal versus hepatic involvement are inversely uh, related. So in the um, early presentation, the kidneys are more involved and uh, whereas in late presentation, the liver is more involved because of the minimal involvement of the kidney, the life gets prolonged. So the liver becomes more involved. IRPKD is non-curable. Uh, so prognosis depends on age and diagnosis. Earlier the age, uh, prognosis is poor. Then we come to the next condition of bilateral cis isolated, that is autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Most common heritable cause of end stage renal disease. Incidence is 1 in 400 to 1000. Tiny percentage present in the fetal life. It is autosomal dominant. So as a result, scan of parents and grandparents has to be done. It is due to mutation in the PKD1 and PKD2 uh, genes and 85% is due to mutation of PKD1 gene. There can be extrarenal disease, typically seen as cysts in liver, pancreas and spleen, seminal vesicles, which are not seen in the prenatal scans. So these um, cysts can present as mass, pain, hypertension and hematuria. So patients uh, result in uh, renal failure in 50% by 60 years. So there is a recent international consensus statement on the diagnosis and management of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney in children and young people. So this article is a recent article. So this lecture covers this article. Now ADPKD on ultrasound you see enlarged kidneys with multiple cysts. It is almost always bilateral. There may be a variable cyst size within the kidney or it may be asymmetrical involvement in the uh, on the right and left side. Extradinal manifestations may also be seen and most commonly include hepatic cysts. Cysts are less commonly seen in other kid organs like pancreas, spleen, ovaries and testis. Now this is an example of ADPKD where you see enlarged kidneys with multiple cysts but the cyst size are varying and it is asymmetrical. It is less in the right kidney whereas more in left kidney. And uh, there are also hepatic cysts. Another example of ADPKD with bilateral uh, cysts in the kidneys. And you see extraordinary manifestation in the form of multiple hepatic cysts is seen in the liver. Now another example of ADPKD, the polycystic disease of the kidneys and as well as cysts in the liver as seen here and also rarely there may be cysts in the other organs. Here this is a transverse scan of the pancreas showing a cyst in the body of the pancreas. Little rare. More common is in the uh, liver. There can be some variations of um, ADPKD like here it can involve an ectopic kidney. Now this is a coronal scan of the right side showing polystic kidney of the uh, right, side, right kidney. Coronal scan of the left flank shows that the left renal fossa is empty and the search for an ectopic kidney shows uh, sagittal scan of the bladder and polycystic kidney of the ectopic precycle kidney and a little more uh, cranial uh, scan shows that the ectopic precycle kidney is replaced by multiple cysts typical of polycystic kidney disease and there is also liver cysts. Now, in the autosomal dominant polycystic kidneys with a family history that is in high risk patients uh, uh, because of uh, history of in the family history, there are uh, P. Revin criteria for a diagnosis. Between the age um, 15 to 39 years, presence of three renal cysts right, in both kidneys would confirm the diagnosis. In between 40 and 59 years, at least two cysts, cysts in each kidney then the diagnosis. Aged uh, 30 years or older, at least four cysts in each kidney will give the diagnosis of ADPKD. Ultrasound with zero or one cyst at age 40 years excludes ADPKD. The cysts in uh, ADPKD may show uh, complications of hemorrhage, infection, rupture 
or nephrolithiasis and uh, the ADPKD results in end stage renal disease in about 50% uh, as the age advances. There is no increased risk of renal cell carcinoma. Now here you see an, uh, images of uh, ADPKD with uh, bilateral polycystic kidneys and uh, cysts in the liver. On the left side you see fresh uh, clot in one of the cysts as seen as a soft tissue mass. It may shift in position. Now fresh clot can also appear as a heterogeneous mass partly filling the cysts or completely filling the cysts as seen in these images. The hemorrhage is subacute will result in appearance of internal echoes in the cysts as seen here in these two images. Calculi in the collecting system of the polycystic kidneys may occur as seen here you see two calculi in the lower calyx of left kidney. This occurs in 16 to 25 percent of ADPKD. It can result in renal colic, microscopic or gross hematuria or it can result in urinary tract obstruction. So calculi causing urinary tract obstruction in this left kidney, you see polycystic kidney and the dilated uh, ureter medial to the cyst and when you trace the ureter you see a calculus in the upper ureter causing obstruction in the patient presenting with uh, uh, ureteric colic. There may be milk of calcium filling the uh, some of the cysts uh, in the polycystic kidneys. Very early onset ADPKD can manifest as hyperechoic kidneys prenatally or in the newborn with ultrasound appearance mimicking that of ARPKD or glomerulocystic disease that is you see bilateral enlarged echogenic kidneys and uh, with or without tiny cysts in the cortex. So this appearance um, should give rise to a suspicion of ADPKD. And if there is a family history, then it is diagnostic. Otherwise, there has to be children suspected of having ADPKD without a genetic diagnosis or clear family history. Confirmatory ultrasound should be performed within 12 months after the initial screening to rule out ADPKD. Now, prognosis of um, ADPKD, 50% of them um, end up in renal failure as the age advances. If it is seen prenatally, then the prognosis is very poor. Then we come to the next condition of renal cystic, uh, renal cystic dysplasia. Now the ultrasound appearance is at least one cyst within an abnormal kidney. What is abnormal kidney? Either hyperechogenic parenchyma as seen here, loss of corticomedullary differentiation or a smaller kidney which are all seen in these two images. So this is a cystic dysplasia. Now cystic dysplasia may be isolated or it may be associated with other urinary tract abnormalities of obstruction or vesicoretric reflex or it may form part of many syndromes and chromosomal abrasions and it can involve either whole kidney or it can involve part of the kidney. Then we come to uh, the non-specific uh, pattern of bilateral uh, renal cystic kidney cystic disease where there are no significant features to arrive at a specific diagnosis. So only a differential diagnosis can be given and it will need supplementary investigations to arrive at a specific diagnosis and uh, the conditions uh, which are uh, presenting as non-specific pattern are HNF1B associated disease, nephronophthysis and border beetle syndrome. Now uh, HNF1B associated disease uh, is autosomal dominant inheritance. Ultrasound appearance can mimic that of ARPKD or other cystic nephropathies. So it may be associated with genital malformations or pancreatic anomalies. Diagnosis cannot be made with the kidney imaging alone and requires genetic confirmation. So uh, kidney uh, ultrasound in parents and grandparents may provide useful clues to arrive at a uh, at the specific diagnosis. 50% of cases carry de novo mutations with a negative family history. So a genetic diagnosis becomes very essential. On ultrasound, this uh, disease uh, presents as bilateral markedly enlarged kidneys, echogenic kidneys, corticomedullary differentiation is absent and uh, when you do high frequency scan, you may see uh, multiple subcapsular cysts which may be a clue for this diagnosis but 
it, uh, a genetic diagnosis is a must. The next condition is nephronophthisis. Uh, it's autosomal recessive tubulointestitial disease that results in kidney failure by third decade of life. And incidence is 1 in 1 lakh individuals. Mutations of the 25 known NPHP related pathogenic genes account for only a third of this condition. So this is associated with kidney cystic kidneys coupled with renal fibrosis and interstitial inflammation which results in renal failure. Ultrasound findings of uh, nephronophthisis are non-specific. So diagnosis cannot be based on imaging findings alone. On ultrasound, uh, uh, the appearance varies with the two types. In infantile type, enlarged kidneys with marked cortical microsis are seen. In juvenile type, normal sized or small kidneys, bilateral increased echogenicity of parenchyma, no cortical medullary differentiation. Now, since, are not, uh, since cysts are not universally present, they are not mandatory for diagnosis. Cysts are at the cortical medullary junction are suggestive and uh, isolated renal disease, it may be isolated renal disease or form part of a syndrome like Joubert, Meckel-Goober or Bardet beedel syndrome. Now here you see uh, cysts in the cortical medullary junction which may be a clue to the diagnosis of nephronophthisis but it is non-specific, a genetic diagnosis is a, uh, is a must. Now, Next um, uh, condition of renal cystic disease is bordered beedle syndrome. It is again autosomal recessive due to mutations in 22 pathogenic genes. There is usually a family history, but there is extreme phenotypic variation. Ultrasound findings are again very non-specific, and diagnosis cannot be based on imaging findings alone and uh, needs genetic diagnosis. This condition also results in kidney failure as age advances. An ultrasound, uh, there are a wide range of abnormalities. It then may be single or multiple uh, cysts, unilateral or bilateral cysts, loss of cortical medullary differentiation, persistent fetal lobulation. There may be associated um, anomalies like horseshoe kidney, ectopic kidney, duplex kidney, or absent kidneys. There may be urinary tract malformations like obstruction. And other clinical features may be obesity, hypogonadism, and polydactyly, which may give a clue to the uh, diagnosis of this syndrome, but um, a genetic diagnosis is necessary. Other rare uh, uh, condition of renal cystic disease is Joubert syndrome and related diseases, which is again autosomal recessive celiopathy. There is extreme genetic heterogeneity over 30 involvement of over 30 genes, and uh, but uh, there is a distinctive cerebellar and brainstem defect uh, described as molar tooth sign and uh, with cystic kidney disease, congenital hepatic fibrosis, skeletal features such as polydactyly. So again, um, uh, a genetic diagnosis is necessary for this condition. The last uh, condition of uh, bilateral renal cystic disease is Meckel-Gruber syndrome, which is a severe celiopathy. Uh, severe multi-organ phenotype involvement is seen and uh, it results in embryonic uh, or early uh, neonatal mortality. So this condition is not seen uh, in the postnatal life. Another condition of uh, renal cystic disease is a cystic nephroma which is a rare benign tumor occurs in boys younger than 4 years is seen as a painless abdominal mass on ultrasound seen as a well circumscribed encapsulated multicystic mass with septa as seen in these images well circumscribed encapsulated multilocular cystic mass and on a high frequency you see thick walls in septa and on color dopplers there is flow in the septa leading to a diagnosis of cystic nephroma so that is the uh, specimen showing the uh, cystic nephrom. Now rarely there may be other condition. Now this we will see a, a case scenario of a 4 year old boy uh, with pain in the left flank of a 15 days. He says an earlier ultrasound has been reported as hydatid cyst of uh, uh, left kidney. A CT scan has been 
reported as mesenchymal malignancy has to be ruled out. Now this is the ultrasound appearance, coronal scan and transfer scan of the left flank. You see uh, a well circumscribed uh, multilocular uh, cyst in the left flank, the left kidney is compressed and um, so the diagnostic steps of this mass abdomen is you have to first uh, see whether the origin of the mass, the nature of the mass and the extent. So here in real time uh, you see the mass moving along with the left kidney indicating that it is arising from the kidney and when you use high frequency the transfer scan you see the big sign uh, confirming that it is arising from the kidney but sometimes in the sagittal scan uh, because of the mass extending below the kidney you may get a negative big sign reverse big sign and a high frequency scan of the upper pole shows thicken uh, septa and solid areas in the mass and on color doppler there is flow in the septa showing that it is a tumor and it is not a simple cyst, it is not a complex cyst, it is not a hydrated cyst. So this is a tumor and uh, on spectral there is low resistance flow pattern and scan medially shows an enlarged lymph node adjacent to the iota confirming that it is malignancy. So the biopsy turned out to be a Wilms tumor, cystic uh, form of Wilms tumor with lymph node metastasis. So rarely a cyst can be a Wilms tumor. So renal cystic disease, family history uh, is important uh, of uh, uh, cystic disease and parental screening has to be done uh, for uh, cysts uh, in the parents as grand grandparents and uh, if a diagnosis is not derived, an autopsy and renal histology has to be done and genetic diagnosis is necessary in uh, most of the conditions. When, when a genetic diagnosis has been done, uh, prenatal diagnosis can be offered for the next pregnancy. Now in bilateral uh, cystic disease, the prognosis depends on the size of the kidney, corticomodulary differentiation, the presumptive diagnosis and uh, <coughs> the renal function test. The prognosis um, for solitary cysts is good. May be first manifestation of severe disease, so have to be followed up. And the isolated unilateral multiple cysts, that is multi cystic dysplasia, there is excellent prognosis. Now, bilateral cyst, renal cystic disease can be life limiting. Examples of uh, Meckel Gruber bilateral multi cystic dysplasia. It can involve grave prognosis. Uh, example is autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. It can lead to chronic kidney disease and renal failure like in ADPKD and there may be mild manifestation as seen in <coughs> bordered beetle syndrome. Renal cystic disease, there is very high variability uh, in the age of manifestation. It can manifest newborn to third decade of life or even prenatally. There is heterogeneity in phenotype, uh, suppose Meckel Gruber is uh, uniformly uh, seen whereas uh, bordered beetle is uh, very highly variable with variable phenotype within the family. Heterogeneity in the genotype is also there uh, like lack clear genotype phenotype association. Heterogeneity within the family as seen in bordered beetle and overlap with congenital anomalies of the urinary tract like uh, uh, ashu kidney obstruction etc. So there is very high heterogeneity, uh, heterogeneity or uh, variability of the renal cystic disease. Genetic tests identify the specific disease in 50 to 70 percent of cases of uh, with uh, two or more cysts or increased echogenicity. And uh, it gives um, the test gives uh, a disease uh, diagnosis rarely in solitary cysts, unilateral MCDK and isolated cystic dysplasia. There is a broad phenotypic and genotypic heterogeneity. <coughs> and the test, uh, preferred uh, test, genetic test is a next generation sequencing. If there is a presumptive diagnosis, then a appropriate genetic test can be offered. 
genetic tests should be offered for all uh, renal cystic disease with bilateral cystic disease and uh, there should uh, you should also advise dna storage uh, because if there is no genetic diagnosis after the autopsy uh, more specific tests can be done with the dna genetic testing leads to earlier diagnosis so which will avoid diagnostic other diagnostic procedures it establishes definite diagnosis which will indicate comorbidities or future complications and um, there, there can be focus screening and prevention in the uh, family but it also has the disadvantage of increased anxiety uh, with a genetic uh, diagnosis recurrence risk can be counseled which may influence parents decision in case of grave prognosis Prenatal and pre-implantation diagnosis can be offered in the next pregnancy with a uh, specific genetic diagnosis uh, in the initial stage. So counseling uh, should be non-directive and it should be multidisciplinary uh, involving a pediatric nephrologist. So to conclude, uh, there can be early or late manifestation. The kidneys may be cystic, echogenic or normal. It can be uh, unilateral or bilateral involvement of the kidneys. The size may be normal or enlarged. It, the condition may be isolated or form part of polymorphomative syndromes with typical or atypical features. There is genetic variability. So all these features uh, indicate heterogeneity of the renal cystic disease. So lastly, acute cystic disease. This condition where renal cysts in patients with end-stage renal disease are seen. And uh, you see uh, bilateral atrophic echogenic kidneys with cysts of varying size in these two kidneys. The criteria is at least three cysts in each kidney of 0.5 to 3 centimeters each. This is seen in 8 to 13 percent of patients with end stage renal disease, and uh, the incidence increases with the length of time of dialysis. And male to female ratio is 3 is to 1, more common in males. Thank you for your patient listening.